still allow you to employ the thing. And so that is six upon this life and your body is ready to this. Knowing that you are forever watching over us, this is the way of pain. We will carry you forever in our hearts and so we will do it. Our world is a little dark enough, but the memories are shining brightly for you to talk about us. You touch the lives of those you love. And oh, how we wanted you to stay. But you were needed up in heaven, and immediately we have gone to the compass way. I guess a wish come true for all of us right now would be if we could only rewind the clock or have it turn real slow, just to give you one last hug before you had to go. It's been the hardest thing to lose you, as you mean so much to us. But you are in our hearts, Paul, and that we will always be. No matter how much time will pass, we will miss you each and every day. Keep shining bright in heaven, Paul, so that you are like him, so that you can light our way. With much love and respect, from all the loving friends of the creator and stuff. We love you, Paul. Just in peace. If anyone knows my Paul, they would know how much you dislike flowers. So this one is custom made, especially for you. This poem is called My Grandfather's Garden. Our grandfather kept a garden, not a normal garden, but a garden of hearts. He brought in all the good things, things that gave our lives their start. He always turned us to the sunshine and he encouraged us to dream. Fostering and nurturing the seeds of our self-esteem. And when the winds and rain came, he protected us just enough, but not too much, because he knew we could stand up and be tough. His constant good example, always, always taught us right from wrong. He left markers in our pathway that will last us a lifetime long. We are our grandfather's glory. We are his legacy. Today we honor you, God George. We will always love and miss you. And ask for you, Jacobs, to come to speak on behalf of the community. Good afternoon, everyone. For having seen me in a very long and I'm the eldest grandchild of my Paul. Paul was my hero. Paul was my very first role model. I remember one year, I was maybe five or six years old, and my grandparents were on their way to Cape Town, and they normally travel by train, and off we went to go drop them off. And I couldn't bear to be without my grandparents that I had to jump on the train with them. I had no clothing with me, it was not planned or anything like that. That is the type of bond that I had with my grandparents that I couldn't spend a day without them. When my family moved to Johannesburg and we stayed in Inadel, it was my grandparents that looked after me every day. Mm -hmm. And as I got to primary school, I couldn't wait for Paul to come home. He would come home to a suggestion by the name of Ferris yeah. in the blue lorry or truck. And I was so excited to see him because I saw him showing him a great play of himself with me, or when he was in the war. And 
how you will show me this middle of one leg and I will take the other one and the house the same leg. You will sometimes show me the afternoons and then you will tell me, you know, either the power the monster diver or the diving. Or you will show me playing darts and you would say, my name was darts and you would want to the person that is doing darts. And sometimes I would hurt myself and fall and Paul would also be there and he would say, hey, I was a doctor. I was a paramedic. Let me bring you my special Makura And then just with all the stories being at the young age that I was, I believe that there was nothing Paul couldn't do. Paul was the world's greatest. Paul was the world's strongest man. And as I got older and went to high school, I became Paul's high school technician. I was Paul's call out guy for anything wrong with his PC. And the two most important things that he always needed to do was one, his budget, and his second one was his grocery list. Paul has a list of everything, maybe the brand, the size, and the price. And as I started driving, I self-designated myself as being the person to take my grandparents shopping as they drive. And Paul would come with his list. And but with my grandparents. Never mind that all the four hours that I had to do, he had kicked his printer. That he was using Windows 98 in 2009. Uh, I eventually upgraded his machine and I taught him how to use the new operating system. These are all memories that, that will never leave me. Yeah. On the day that I my phone was there, I didn't know how to feel. I just knew that something was torn up, something was missing inside of me. And I didn't know how to mourn. The next day after dropping my wife's ammonia at that work, I usually just go to the garage to get whatever bread or something or coke. And I found myself at pick and play. And I'm waiting in this. Along the line, I'm not understanding why. Somebody tapped my shoulder and said, uh, You know, this is the baby waiting in the line. <laughs> 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 I think he was And I think he was silly. And they were playing the song by Kenny Rogers through the years. And at that moment, I kind of did. I quickly got everything that I needed from the, the shop holding back the tears and I quickly uh, drove home. As I got home, I, I noticed that the, the back light switch was so hard for the spotlight. And as I flipped it off, something just occurred to me that when I bought this house, Paul, you were the one who installed the lights for me. And when I was at the place, this reminded me of the time when I always used to take the shopping. And you were with me at that time in Big and Play Paul, looking with me through the house. And, and the, the song that was playing, you, you would all know the words and the pictures of it. And I even believe uh, one of my grandparents' anniversary, that was a song dedicated to me. And as I clicked that light switch off, that was when I I found peace with God, and that was the time where I could do that say goodbye. That even though the light switch is off and you are no longer here, that your memory will always live within us. And on behalf of the grandparents, I know that all of us will continue your legacy. Everything that I experienced with you, they experienced the same with you. Every story that was shared with me was shared with them. And we all had this, as Monique 
explained that you know memorial expectation language is not and and the, this is something that that is basically the very stem where we were like well, we were simply for another Sorry. And that is something that I believe all grandkids will continue throughout their lives as a remembrance of who you were for yes. all the fun things that we have We've lost a guy, a man with a golden heart, who were our anchor for, who were the glue that. Get this family together. I will miss you dearly. And all I can say right now, thank you that I could be part of your life. Thank you very much. Awesome. Now, as long as you come to the front, most of them are asked to. Pastor yeah, so Robert, please come to the front and share your part. Robert's the eldest son of Bob, for those that don't know, so I'm sure you do. Is Robert the famous one? I don't know what he's going to say next. You honor the dream by doing the work that you have done the work. So you have honored the dream. So my dad's dream was about family. You know, about 19 months ago, and I will forever be thankful to Grady for this. Grady came to us as a family and said, We need to put mom and pop on their grave. Two weeks after, he was put, the they were put on their grave. My father landed up in hospital in absolute for two weeks. During COVID-19, our parents spent seven months with us. Seven months, I believe, I will not have had it. If it wasn't the start, we were going to get on to that level. In my chats with Paul, on more than other things you need to tell me, I love my father so much. And I love my life for you. My assumption on that was that maybe he was not a little foster. But Mark would learn that he might just be a champion. He would speak about Alton, and for some reason, Alton, he'd always speak and say, I'm a good person to get that for whatever reason. Good at God, good at work. Mary was his princess. Mary, because as a mature young lady, she was also sleeping in the bed. And I need you to hear this very clearly, Martha, Captain, and Mary, because Dad never lied. He would say, Robert, you are the handsome one. <laughs> 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 In conclusion, I'd like to share two things with you. Honor your parents and you will live for them. It's both of them. Number two, honor the dream by doing the work. Thank you. Will be reading a phone of your own. Good morning, everybody. Today we are here to celebrate part of the to each and every one of them. 
Before I leave Moss tribute to everybody, I would just like to say this that God had a lot of works, but he was my dance for you. Everything I asked him to do, he would do with me. He even did Jerusalem with me. And I will forever remember that. But I am here today to give tribute to a man whom I call there as well by reading a letter from my mom. Where do I begin? My husband of 57 years, the best years of my life, and how the time has come to say goodbye to you. We met in 1962, got married in 1963. I was 19 and he was 22. The first time he saw me, he said, suppose you know that you're going to be Mrs. Jacobs. And I thought, what a forward man. Actually, he was a handsome man. He was a tall man, tall, dark, and handsome. And after a whirlwind of romance, we started our lives together. He was a great husband, very hardworking, and a happy-go-lucky person, a loving father, hands on in every single way. After three years of marriage, we started a family together three sons and two daughters. We were blessed with beautiful children. And like I always said to him, thank you. Thank you for helping me have these children. Our home was always full with love, joy, and laughter. Never a dull moment. And he, he was supporting me in everything. We continued through life through the good and through the bad, it was always okay. And as the years went on, we achieved most of what we planned for. He was a man of integrity, no nonsense person, who always wanted things to be in order. His words to me always was that he wants the best for his children. And I felt that he has succeeded because he left a very good legacy. He was an incredible man, a loving grandfather to his children and not forgetting his great granddaughter. Oh, we are going to miss you so much, George. How all of us who knew you is going to miss you, your jokes, Sorry, we missed not forgetting the Saturdays when you keep me away from the team to watch your own sports. I would not dare touch the remote, all this, and so much more. I will dearly miss you. Now that you have left me, I'm going to mostly miss my cups of coffee.
now we show Jared Jacobs to the front. George Robert Jacobs, Paul Paul, was born on the 18th of January, 1941. He will meet him and William Jacobs. They are the youngest son. He grew up with them on Cape Town before moving to Kensington. They met a lot of his life. They landed a kiss. We married on the 20th of April. 1963. They had three sons and three daughters, for which they lost a daughter at nine months. Paul worked for further two years in Cape Town to move their operations to Johannesburg, where they became colleagues at them, where he became the factory manager. This is where Paul received his long life, his long sales awards. They were eventually retired. It was the move to Johannesburg in 1989 that left our immediate family in Cape Town very sad. But in retrospect, we are grateful to have made all the significant people in the family. Follow up with singing sports. We are reminded of his many stage performances as a duet player and his twins. His many sporting activities from soccer to cricket to even dogs. We also know it as either softy or picky. His passion for soccer, when you know specifically, as we pass on to his children, about his grandchildren and his great grandchildren. It was easy buying him for years, as long as they had remained in that little dog. He was happy. Born for a closely seat of salvation in the next hour, where he served at the Nazarene Church in the next part, and preferred to perform the ruling object of the fellowship, where Paul served as a national. You couldn't enter the building without a handshake or a hand-off. He was a sign of the Lord's always to serve the worship there, where he would take any opportunity to grab the mic and jump on stage. In 2019, Paul was with a ventilator, and every day after was a day of grace and all the doors of the family. On Monday, the 2nd of November, 2020, at 2 p.m., he moved on to do a great place. This legend is behind his wife, three sons, one daughter, five daughters, and ten grandchildren, and one great grandchild. Paul, who loved the individual, was so convinced. 